Hello, Ray Wheatley for Fight News. Talking to two-time uh, world champion Love More Than Do, who's just been paid a massive compliment by one of the greatest fighters in the world today, Miguel Cotto. He's asked recently who his toughest opponent was, and he said, Love More Than Do. How are you, Love More? Hey, I'm good to see you. What, good to see you, Tim. What a fantastic compliment that um, Miguel Cotto's paid you, mate. Uh, look, I feel honored, you know, to hear something like that coming from uh, <clears throat> Miguel Coro. You know, um, as far as I'm concerned, Miguel Coro is one of the best, you know, fighters out there. He's yeah. proved himself many times. I mean, he's won world titles as a super lightweight, as a welterweight, as a junior middleweight. He's now he's dominated as a middleweight. Now, to hear something like that coming out of him is an honor. And apart from that, Ray, you know. The guy has been with some monsters in boxing. You know? Oh, you look at it. Margarito, Mayweather, Pacquiao. Pacquiao, you know, Randall Bailey. But he has selected that fight. He said, I had to go way back to 2004. Uh, the African fighter, Love More Than Do, he was my toughest opponent of my career. Now, that that's great, uh, Love More. Now, can you tell me the circumstances uh, how you got that fight, you took that fight on short notice, it was a, an IBF eliminator when Kostya Zou was the champ um, how did you how did you actually get that fight? I, I took the fight on a, on a week's notice um, what happened was uh, I just came off um, uh, a very disputed loss against Shambi Michel uh, mm -hmm. for the interim IBF title right. which was another fight I took on less than 10 days notice right. um, Miguel Cotto was supposed to fight someone else. I can't remember who exactly he was supposed to fight. But then his opponent pulled out and I got a last minute call and I jumped at the opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, now let's go through the fight itself. Um, through the bout itself, you had Cotto on the back move. A lot of that during most of those rounds. Um, did you feel you hurt him on uh, in certain occasions? you know when you remember any of the rounds you might have hurt him? Look, there's, there's been a few occasions where I really had him. I caught him with some good right hands. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and there's been occasions where he had me. With you body know, shots, body right? Shots, yeah. you, know, you know, and that's why I always say the guy is a devastating body puncher. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and if you look at it, um, um, Koro is a very aggressive fighter. And um, I think um, I sort of caught him by surprise uh, when I turned out to be the aggressor. Mm -hmm. That's right, you might have surprised him, mate. I think he might have thought it's going to be an easier easier assignment, but uh, even though you're on short notice, you, you're a fighter that always kept yourself in shape, and it certainly paid off that night. Um, you mentioned um, when you fought Chamba Mitchell, that was another fight was that was disputed, and that was for the interim idea of time. Tell me about that fight. Look, everyone that saw the fight will tell you I won that fight. You know, um, I remember at the time uh, Shambe was being promoted by, by Gary Shaw. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's no way Gary Shaw was going <laughs> to, you know, give that fight to me, you know, considering that I wasn't even uh, contracted to him. It's funny, you know, because years later, after I've won the IBF and, and Gary Shaw was trying to sign me up, uh, you know, he, he, he said it out of the blue, he said it to me, I love more. had you been my fighter at the time, you know, you would have walked away with the decision yeah. of the night. Yeah, but, I that's, think but that's boxing for you. That is boxing, but um, ma most of the boxing riders, I think, had you in front that particular night. Now, you went on to, um, you lost, you, you won the title eventually, 2007, when uh, you boxed uh, Newfell Ben Raber at Homebush. Another outstanding fight, a seesaw battle, went all the way. Uh, you stopped him in uh, round 11. Tell me a little bit about that fight. Look, it was a great fight. Uh, you know, and, and the good thing about that fight, I was so motivated because uh, uh, um, Raba has been calling my name um, for, you know, for, for ages and he's been, you know, he's been saying some things that I didn't really like. And I, for me, it wasn't just more about the world title. It was, it, it was more of a personal thing. You know, I, I really wanted to hurt him. I wanted to stop him. And um, you know, but you know, he came to fight. He he was a great fighter. You know, um, you know, should be told when he fought Rurango, uh, when Rurango, he should have won the fight. That's you know? right. Yeah. And in fact, yeah. he should have been the champion defending yeah. against me. But uh, look, you know, um, that was one. You know, that that was my first world. You know, world title win, and um, I was happy about the decision. Yeah. At the end. Yeah. Then you went on to uh, you fight Paul. You fought Paul Malinaji two different occasions in the States, in England, 
uh, the last time you fought him in England, uh, that was a very close fight. Look, the first fight in America, he beat me. Yeah. You know, um, but the second fight in uh, in the UK, everybody knows I beat him. You know, and, and the problem with that fight is that uh, you know he had already signed uh, a deal to fight. Uh, um, uh, Ricky Heron. Okay. Uh, you know, there was already a contract in place. There's no way they were gonna let me jeopardize that. You know? No. And, you know, I mean, I even knocked that guy down, and you know, the referee didn't even count. Mm -hmm. You know, but that's but you, you went on to win a, an IBO title in Africa. I went on to win uh, an IBO title against uh, Philip Ndo. Yeah. Um, no relation? No relation at all. Um, we just same share, name, eh? just share the same last name. Last name yeah. um, and then you know I was able to defend again the title in South Africa and yeah. in uh, in the UK. And uh, look, I, I think um, I had a great career. You, you did. Know, I, I was expecting to win one world title, but ended up winning two yeah. major world titles and um, one minor being the WBF. You know. Yeah. No, you're a great champion. Everyone Thank knows you. that. Love more now. Love more. You also fought. Uh, Can Canelo Alvarez, Saul Alvarez with our mutual friend and leading boxing writer Grant Lacuzzi in the corner. You done a good job that day? It was a great fight. Oh, who? Grantley? Grantley? Grantley is the best. <laughs> the he always best. does. Um, now Canelo, you, you pushed Canelo all the way and uh, I believe um, Oscar De La Hoya paid, paid you a nice compliment afterwards. Um, uh, now, can, if Cotto gets past Canelo, a lot of people are talking about Cotto's chances against Triple G, Golovkin. In your opinion, can Miguel Cotto beat Golovkin? Look, like I said before, Cotto is in a class of his own. He's a great fighter. He's, you know, he's proved it many times. And as far as I'm concerned, I, I think uh, Triple G is a great fighter, got great prospect. Uh, mm -hmm. He still needs to establish himself against a great fighter, and I think Cotto will be the test for him. Um, and you know, that's one fight I will pay to watch. Yep. Uh, you know, and, and I believe um, um, if Triple G can beat Cotto, then you know he sort of uh, um, established himself as a great fighter. But you know, I, I don't think it'll be an easy fight. No. You know, and uh, so it's a 50 50 fight. It's a 50 50 fight, yeah. and uh, yeah. look, I, I will lean a little bit towards Cotto. Yeah, you know, with his uh, experience? He, because of his experience, his yeah. toughness, and yeah. um, you know, he, he just comes to fight. And he's done a great job in the, the middleweight division. A lot of people didn't expect him to be so devastating at 160 pounds, but he's, uh, he's knocking them all over 160 yeah. pounds. Not, you know, uh, apart from that, he's been in with some devastating punches in the past, and uh, you know, he's been able to withstand their punching power. Yeah. And uh, you know, his boxing skills, I think that's something he and he could use against Triple G. Yeah, it's going to be one of the um, interesting battles, mate, uh, probably of 2016, if it happens. Uh, now, one thing you did while you were boxing all over the world, you, you continued to study at university to, to be a lawyer. You finally got your diploma two years ago now, Liverpool? No, I've been practicing for almost four years now. Right? Four years now, you've been a lawyer. A successful lawyer in Sydney, one of the most successful lawyers in Sydney. Now you've got an, uh, your own uh, practice. Then is it Rockdale? It's in Rockdale. Okay, and you've got um, you've got several lawyers working for you as well. Yeah, I've got, yeah. It's, it, I'm running under a lot more lawyers, and I've got a few people working with me. Good mate. Now, have you got a message for young boxers, um, just to consider doing a, a working in another uh, line of business after they finish boxing? My, What's your message? my advice is always the same, right? You know, uh, get you, get some education. You know, yeah. boxing is a short time career. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, you, you see fighters um, ending up staying too long in the sport and getting hurt because they just got nothing else to fall back on. You know, prepare your future. Have something to fall back on. You know, it doesn't have to be education. You know, set yourself up with some business or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, because. You know, Boxing, it's easy to make money in boxing, but it's also easy to blow it away. Yeah. You know, um, so you know, just set yourself up for the future. You know, you don't want to end up in the staying too long in the sport and risking it with your health. Yeah. You're in a great country, Australia, which is, uh, offers many opportunities for, to the young people. Um, what year did you come to Australia to live? I came here in 1996. That's right, to fight. To Cliff to Samardin, right? No, I came in '95, fought Cliff Samardin, then went back to South Africa, and then I, your family, then I decided to come back. Okay. 
96. Do you feel you would have got the same opportunities in South Africa? No way. No, no. No way. Uh, look, you know, it's far, you know, the worst part of it is uh, I wouldn't have had this opportunity in my own country of birth. Um, you know, um, it's just way it's just the way things are. Look, I'm I'm grateful and um, I'm happy to have had that opportunity to move to Australia. Uh, and I don't think I would have been able to um, to educate myself the way I, I did. You know, had I stayed in South Africa. Yeah. Um, you know, and I don't think uh, my children would have had the same opportunity mm. opportunities as they are getting. So today. your children are young teenagers now, right? My children are teenagers. I'm a grandfather. A grandfather. I'm a you grandfather. Very well, love so. more for being a grandfather. <laughs> I'm a grandfather. Yep. Like, um, but having said that, you know, um, I'm so proud, very, very proud to be a South African. And, um, mm, of course. Um, you know, but again... Uh, I'm sure I'm, they're very proud of you, mate. Thank you. Uh, okay, Lamar, thanks very much for your time. Always a pleasure talking to you, Ryan. And I hope to see you again soon, mate. God bless you. All the best.